today isn't the first time. It probably won't be the last. These two teams representing opposite sides of the state will meet in the final game of the season. Now they do it this afternoon in the Class 2 Show Me Bowl at Faro Field. You have the story of the Lamar Tigers, a team that has battled a lot of adversity under the leadership of Jared Mayshore, led by a story junior quarterback, Alex Wilkerson, who continues his famously leggy legacy name. And on the other side, the story, Judd Nager from Valley Catholic. 222 wins, led by a senior quarterback, Grant Fallert, who is going to try to light him up on the offensive side of the ball this afternoon. Both teams have gotten warmed up. It's a little chilly here in Columbia at Furrow Field. And it's Valley Catholic once again taking on Lamar at the Show Me Bowl like they did many times in St. Louis at the old John Edward Jones Zone. Hello everyone and let's bring you inside the broadcast booth. James Stanley here with Cameron Connor as we get set for the Class 2 Show Me Bowl. Cameron, what are we going to expect to see this afternoon? You're going to see a lot of high velocity play from both quarterbacks. There's really no other way to put it. Both of these guys are dual threat guys. Both have over hundreds of yards rushing. Grant Fowler has over a thousand yards rushing on the year and they can both sling it when they need to. On the other side of things, I think when you talk about Alex Wilkerson, the Valley defense is definitely going to just try to disrupt him in any way he can because he can do it on all sides of the ball. And he had three interceptions in the last playoff game too. So it's definitely going to be something where you're going to see a lot of high quarterback play and whoever ends up coming out on top, it's going to be interesting to see. I think it's going to be a big defensive battle as well, but this is a Lamar team that is very deep. They have faced a lot of adversity. Meanwhile, you're taking a look at Valley Catholic as they try to tie the state record with a win for a number of state championships, and that currently is held by Webb City all by themselves. But a win today by Valley will get them uh, tied up with Webb City, the Cardinals. One thing that you look at when you look at this Valley Catholic defense I mentioned a disruption already, and I think that's going to be the word of the day on their side of things. You look at their top five defensive players, whether it's Josh Fallert, you have Isaac Viox, Andre Oberly, Alex Viox, and Cohen Gibbs. Lots of sacks across the board, lots of forced fumbles, lots of fumbles recovered. They're going to try to get after Alex Wilkerson early. And on the defensive side of things for the Lamar Tigers, both of these clubs overall have done a great job of limiting opponents throughout the season you have the Lamar Tigers defense that really overall when you look at things they have only averaged about 10.7 points per game which is a highly touted number it's gonna be I think a lot of the time it's gonna be whoever strikes first on the defensive side and it's gonna end up kind of correlating to maybe a victory for other side uh, we're waiting for Valley to get their introductions underway currently Lamar is at midfield introducing their entire offense this is a big Offensive line up front for Valley Catholic. They'll start with Dalton Roth and Zach Nager out on the offensive tackles. The guards will be Hayden Barr as well as Jacob Elbert and then Carter Viox, the center, on the snaps. And luckily today, the weather is not going to have as much of a, as a factor as it had the last two nights because it's been rainy and it's been cold. Now it's just cold. Huge factor yesterday for a lot of the early games, especially in the 3 ace class championship. It was basically misting, spitting that whole morning. And for the first, I'd say almost half of that game, you saw a lot of slipping. You saw a lot of gloves that, you know, just weren't getting that yet, that regular traction that you're used to. But to your point, I don't think that's going to be a factor here today. Of course, Valley comes up from St. Genevieve out on the eastern side of the state. Meanwhile, for Lamar, uh, and the bright side, the snow they've had the last couple of weeks, they have avoided that on the western side of the Show Me State as we now take a look at the far sideline. That's our officials this afternoon. Kyle Slusher will be our white hat. Ronald Parks is the umpire. Michael Stevens, the linesman. Line judge Robert Rennick and the back judge is Michael Williamson, Jr. One thing that I want to mention to you real quick, James, how about the amount of Vioxes and Fallerts <laughs> on the whole Valley Catholic side? It's basically a family reunion for that entire team. <laughs> Absolutely. And talking about all the French heritage that is down there around St. Genevieve, you know, one of the first uh, outposts uh, for French settlement into the state. So maybe at one point Vioxe was uh, pronounced a little differently. I believe you were talking to you. You studied <laughs> French in college. Uh, Voix, I believe, was yes. what you were telling me before the game. But Vioxx is uh, how the family touts the name now. And I think we're going to be seeing a lot of contribution from Vioxx's on the field. 
definitely going to be the, that. That's going to be the case, especially with Fallerts as well. And one of the things that's it's great to mention on the defensive side of things, Josh Fallert, he's their leading tackler on the season. 102 tackles, four sacks, two interceptions, a forced fumble, and that fumble recovery. That's going to be one of the Fallerts out there. And then, of course, on the other side of things, Grant Fallert, starting quarterback for the Warriors, he has 1,200 rush or 1,204 rush yards on the on the year, just south of 2,000 passing yards, and quite a number of touchdowns to go along with it. Well, if you're going to talk about family names, though, as we bring it back to this, you cannot talk about family names without talking about the Wilkerson's involvement in Lamar. Of course, you have Chris Wilkerson, the the dad who was the athletic director back in the mid-2000s for Lamar. He's now an assistant coach. And uh, then you have Alex Wilkerson, his two older brothers, playing collegiately at the Division II level, both in the GLVC and the MIAA, which the MIAA is the Southeastern Conference of Division II football. So a lot of talent in this family, and we're going to be looking a lot, probably saying Wilkerson's name quite a bit this afternoon as he takes the ball under center at quarterback. Speaking of Alex Wilkerson, that's basically going to be the goal of the game for both sides of the ball. For Lamar, it's going to be how often can we get the ball in the hands of Alex Wilkerson. For the defense of Valley Catholic, it's going to be how often can we have him not influence the game. Because, like I had mentioned earlier, once we first opened up, three interceptions last week at safety. And then, oh yeah, by the way, he's your starting quarterback that can get it done with his legs, can get it done with the air. Whatever you need, he's got it. Let's meet the captains here for... Lamar, Kyler Nance, as well as Ian Googie, Chase Query, and rounding things out for Lamar, it's Trace Woldridge. Meanwhile, for Valley Catholic, Alex Viox is out there. He's joined by Jacob Elbert, as well as Grant Fallert. And Isaac Viox. And there's our white hat Kyle Slusher on the opening coin flip here at Faro Field. What's your strategy here if you win the toss? Are you deferring to the second half? You know, if I'm Lamar, I want to get that ball early and often. Since there's such a run-heavy offense, I think they're going to want to try to push this through the, f the throat of that Warriors defense and stay ahead of things, because especially when you talk about clock management, when you're a run-heavy team like this, it's going to run in your favor the more you score. I believe that Valley won the toss. They have elected to receive. And to that point, that's exactly what that Lamar Tigers team did not want to start things off so we're going to have to see if the defensive side of end for the Tigers can get things done to open this one out. One thing that I think is really important to mention for both head coaches they're both alma maters or their alma maters are their head coach schools which to your point they really know that ahead of things here today what it takes to win this game both schools have been there an immense amount of times and also an immense amount of times against each other we, we talked about it before <laughs> the game that they met quite a few times at what is now the Dome at America Center in St. Louis when the Michigan State Championships used to be held there. We will await the offense led by Grant Fallert, the wide receiver core, Tyler Gage, Ryan Fallert, and Alex Viox, and also actually not to mention Colin Henderson, a wide receiver, Alex Viox in at running back. Chase Query will kick this one off for Lamar. At one point, they won eight straight state championships. They are in contention for their 10th state championship this afternoon. And then don't forget, once again, if Valley Catholic gets it done today here, they will be tied with Webb City for their 16th state championship. To think that both of these schools won as a chance to go into double digits, four titles, one already there. <laughs> it's pretty much a master class from either of these schools a lot of the time you never sh shrug your shoulders if one of these two teams or to your point if both of them are there meeting in this historic rivalry there's query to kick this one away back to receive fallard and henderson and we are underway in the class two show me bowl and for field oh look at this he's return room. there's a seam and he's gonna rip it open henderson Brought down on a big special teams play. What a way to start things for the Valley Catholic Warriors. You had that gap that opened up right toward the middle of the field. And as soon as he saw it, he took off. And there was hardly anyone there to catch him. They're lucky they got it. 
Colin Henderson was the return man there, setting up for a great field. And once again, here you go, as you look to the replay, once he found that gap, he basically diced them with that diagonal move towards the far side of the field. Good tackle on the play there by number three, Chase Query. Yeah, he just had to beat the kicker. Empty set backfield on first and ten here for the Warriors. Bobble snap on first down and smothered by a Viox. Alex Viox very, very quick to jump on the ball there. And while we were talking about maybe there would be no slipping or sliding, but it looks like no matter what, that's how it started out. It is a frigid day. It, it, is. Is, it is cold here today in Columbia. And yeah. much to their credit, at least they're not dealing with all the moisture that we had the last two nights. Basically hovering around that mid to low 40s. And when you're playing football out here in this weather, it slowly starts to chew away at your skin. So we're going to have to see if that plays a factor into things. It's a screen to Tyler Gag, and he is buttoned up. We'll get a couple three yards out of it, and we'll be a third down at about 12 to go, maybe 11. And to best maybe classify what the weather is like, go to your fridge right now, open it up. And that's what it feels like, <laughs> that, that cold air just hitting you. Just imagine being immersed in that third and long. Down the field, it is caught at the 10. Touchdown, Valley on their first possession of the day. They find Ryan Fallert for the score. Grant Fallert to Ryland Fallert. How often do you think that combination has worked together throughout the years? And with what a beautiful touch on that throw from Grant Fallert. It went right over the top into the bucket. A good start here for Valley Catholic. Let's take another look at it. Break it down for me, Cameron. I think the precision that you talk about when the or the precision in the master class to basically be able to float that thing over a defender into the end zone like we said these kids have probably been playing together for most of their lives when you're talking about a football family and it clearly showed through right there the extra point is good right down main street for will coon Seven nothing. Valley opens the scoring here at the Class Two 2023 Show Me Bowl in Columbia, and Lamar will need to have an answer when they take the field with the ball. That drive ended pretty quickly. Also, it was on a short field, thanks to the special teams play that got things started for the Warriors. And if you're the Lamar Tigers right now, you're thinking, okay, we have to get back into this early and often to basically methodically drive down the field. It's not like there's anything too desperate to have to worry about right now, but especially when you see how the Warriors scored with ease like that, they're definitely going to have to try to find some sort of offensive ease themselves. Isaac Bassler to kick this one off for Valley. They have a different look on their specialist teams. One for kickoffs, that's Bassler. The other is Kuhn on the points, afters, and field goals. What a kick. Yeah, that's a deep kick. With not a lot of wind. It will be returned by Aiden Sheets around the edge. And buttoned up out of bounds. Not a bad return, of course, was not as good as what we saw out of the return from Mr. Henderson on the first kickoff of the day. Yeah, Logan Kish basically saw his angle, took it to that far outside, and yeah, it wasn't as good of a return that we saw previously, but still a great way to get your team in pretty good field position to start this one off. So now we welcome out to the field Alex Wilkerson, who dealt with an injury middle of the season, described as a little more than an ankle sprain. But now he's healthy, and this is the best that the Tigers have played all year. Quarterback keeper through the second level and stopped after a gain of 13. Great offensive line play there when you open that up. Basically, when you see that gap, I think we could have drove a golf cart through it, realistically. And when you're looking at what Wilkerson's going to be doing today, you're going to be seeing a lot of those give and goes where he's going to be taking it himself because he's really dangerous once he gets rolling. And yeah, that offensive line was like when Moses smoked the water with a 2 by 4 and part of the <laughs> waves. A lot of targets here for Wilkerson. Kish and Query mainly. And it's a take. And a big loss. 
you talk about great offensive line play, we just saw the play before how to do it. On this play, we saw not how to do it. But Logan Kish didn't really have anywhere to go. Great play up front by the Valley Catholic defense. Almost looked like a jet sweep, and that threw me off for a moment, but great defensive play up front, and let's also highlight those defensive linemen, Cohen Gibbs, Jacob Elbert, Zach Nager, and Isaac Vionx. Wilkerson kept it right up the gut. He'll get back to the original starting point of the downs. But now it will be third down and 10. Although the last time there was a third down, we saw a big play out of Valley. The issue is with this Lamar Tigers team is they can pass the ball very effectively. However, they like to do it on their terms. You're going to see a lot of runs up front from this team, and they don't really like to break that stride. So let's see if they try to do anything else here to shake it up. The Warrior crowd getting loud. Wilkerson looks to pass on third and ten. Flips it up front. It's caught. First down. And about three more. Needed ten. They're going to get 13. Googie looks to be a little shaken up there on that play. However, good to see him get back to his feet. Great awareness there by Wilkerson. He had a lot of time to be poised in the pocket, looking around, and finally found his man striking over the middle of the field with a little float. Also stayed poised in the quarterback, rather in the pocket. First pass play of the afternoon for Lamar. So far, three rushes, one pass on the drive. Quarterback keeper for Wilkerson trying to shed a tackle, but this time it is for positive yardage, so that'll bring up a second down. And they'll call it six. Make it seven. Three plays up the gut for Wilkerson so far here in this game. I'm curious to see if they have any designed runs for him as the game goes on to maybe get outside those tackles, see if he can use his speed to beat people to the edge. There's some presence out on that edge. The Warriors anticipating run on the empty set backfield, and here comes a penalty flag. You are going to see many names from the Valley Catholic defense. There's Kyle Slusher or Whitehead. You're going to see many times that the Valley Catholic defense, you're going to see a lot of blue in the backfield. Going back to that disruption word I used earlier for the defense of Valley Catholic, they have <laughs> a lot of sacks on the season, and that's what they're exactly going to try to do when coming after Wilkerson. That's a costly five-yard penalty. Pushes them now back to second down and 11. Oh, someone jumped. No call, though. Wilkerson dancing through the defensive line, and maybe we're not seeing as wide as a gap that time. We've seen Valley now come up and start to close up the holes. And he basically got right back to where they were before that penalty happened. So it's going to be a long third and eight situation. However, if they open up the playbook again to the passing option, I think that they should have at least some sort of edge here on this one. Lamar one for one on third down this drive. Last time it was a pass play on third down. See what Wilkerson has dialed up. The option to Googie. Around the edge. Got a lot of room. He's not going to get there, but this is an interesting position you're in if you're Lamar. They are in four down territory. Do you go for it here, Cameron? It looks like they intend to go for it here. I don't see anyone from the punting unit planning to get this one done. This is the national, or this is the state championship, James. You know, sometimes you got to do things a little early, a little often. Maybe use a little bit more urgency than you would if you're back in, let's say, week one. Wilkerson is the punter, so I would not put it past Lamar to maybe attempt a pooch punt. No one back to receive for the Warriors. Lamar's going to go for it. Wilkerson airs it out, and it's dropped on fourth down. The intended target out on the flat was Query, and he couldn't pull it through. Overall, that was a great play call. I, it was literally a little quick route to the outside. They knew both receiver and quarterback knew exactly what was going on, where the ball was going to be. Just couldn't get his hands up in time to get that one. Maybe Query was thinking about securing it running upfield before he actually caught the ball. Now will be the defense's turn to come out onto the field to get a stop here for the Tigers, but... 
If you're on the other side and you're Valley Catholic, I think you're licking your chops here through the year. Fowler for 37 yards in the touchdown, and Gage has one reception as well. Meanwhile, it's a handoff to Viox, and he gets out of one tackle, second effort. Maybe hurt him. It looked like they were going to give him forward progress on a gain of one. That second effort, he went backwards. Seems like the guy that initially got him down there was the Lamar defensive tackle, Rourke Dillon. Great assumption after Viox had shaked out of a couple of tackles to get on top of him. Alex Viox in the back pocket there with Grant Fallert. Play action. Caught. And here goes Tyler Gang for the first down. No, the ball popped out. But they say he was down first. Definitely got out of a situation there. Tyler Gag with the reception. He just basically found some open area in that flat space. Almost completely wide open. No one really around him until he ran another probably seven yards of field. It's almost like Lamar is trying to defend the deep pass. Not really worried too much about the mid-range. Fowler on the hard count. And Valley Catholic, their first drive. Great play on special teams, set them up for a short field. They took it in on four plays. This one caught. And a good route from behind to the catch. And give and go is for Evan Viox. The ability to sit there and stop and turn on a dime, because as soon as that ball is delivered, he almost had a, a little bit more of like a Travis Kelsey type move for anyone that's familiar with the Kansas City Chiefs. When he catches the ball right around the middle of the field and plants one way and pivots another to gain extra yards after the catch. Only a three-man rush from the Lamar Tigers that time around on defense. I'm curious to see if they start to shake that up, because right now at the moment, they're giving foul all day to pass back there. Especially when there's no one else in the pocket with them. Fake the run. And caught by Henderson on the screen. Not a lot of room to go. No gain. Maybe one yard. We'll set up a second down and long. Tried to use a little bit of diversion there from the offensive view for the Warriors. Lamar wasn't, wasn't having it, though. They were ready for that one. Fowler, by the way, has yet to throw an incomplete pass. He's four for four. So an illegal formation, a five-yard penalty, and they will repeat first down. Kind of a bit, even though you're five yards back, kind of a best-case scenario to at least get the, the ball again in a, in a first down scenario because that first play, they weren't going anywhere, so it was going to be second and long regardless. And with the arm we've seen from Fallert, and this is the same play. They've run the same play three times on this drive, and now another big ripping of yardage. If you're the Warriors' offense, if the Lamar Tigers are going to keep giving you that time to pass and they're going to keep giving you that availability with open little areas in the flats, why not keep throwing to them? Basically, another quick rerun of a play right there, able to get close to the goal line. Second reception for Ryland Fallert. First one was for a touchdown, and now he sneaks out to the edge. Handoff for Viox. And he stopped. What a big effort there off that defensive line. Rourke Dillon pushing the pile back the other way. Rourke Dillon is definitely trying to set the tone for this Lamar defense early. He's been pra practically involved or getting a hand on an offensive player, I think, almost every play of this drive. Six foot one, 255 pounds. Lamar with their backs to the wall. Eight on the play clock. Fowler through the air. It's knocked down. And for a moment, it looked like Trevor Bassler was going to try to pick that one up. Regardless, great anticipation and basically a guessing game to throw your hands up whenever that quarterback's delivering. And in a lot of different scenarios, with how high that ball popped up, it could have been pretty dangerous. That's twice now. We've seen the ball just not hit the turf immediately. And early, it was earlier on this drive on the reception to Tyler Gag when it popped up, but his knee was down on the ground before it could be called. 
And I'm sure with how cold it is today, that football probably feels pretty hard. Time of possession has been immense for the Warriors so far. Here's a catch to the end zone. Touchdown. Tyler Gag. Third reception of the first quarter. Valley extends the lead 13 0, pending the extra point. You just have a short corner to the flat right there between Gag and also Grant Fowler. That's going to be his second passing touchdown here of the day. And once again, to look back at it, once again, just the little corner route or that post route to that flat side. Hard play to defend right there, It was, and the ball was on the money. The extra point almost blocked, but it's right down the middle of Broadway. Valley Catholic, 14, Lamar nothing, here in the first quarter of the 2023 Class Two Show Me Bowl. This is the start that Valley Catholic has looked for, but there is a factor here for Lamar that does not show up on the score sheet, and that is their response to adversity. And if there's anything that could light a fire under this team right now, it could be this 14-0 deficit. They're going to need to find any grasping straws they can to get back in this one. With such a run-heavy offense, you start talking about time of possession. Well, the Warriors have all of that basically in the first quarter so far, so they're going to have to find a way to get back into this ball game quick. We saw a great kickoff last time from Isaac Bassler. He has a pretty good leg. Man, that's a howitzer of a leg. That's Harrison Mevis good. Yeah, that might have been the best kickoff I've seen out of any of these state championships here so far. To be able to pin the ball back like that, it's an advantage because this team basically sets up at the 20 every time regardless. You don't have to worry about those nightmare scenarios of a, of a long return or anything like that if you have a leg that can always pin them back. And that also takes another factor out of here for Lamar. Talking earlier this week with head coach Jared Bayshore. He says special teams are some of the ways that is, you know, they can find an opportunity to exploit all the teams they played this season. Here comes the rush and the give around the left side for Logan Kish. Just a gain of three. Number 78 for the Warriors on defense, Zachary Neger, he got in the backfield almost immediately on that play. It forced the running back to cut inside when he didn't want to prematurely, and they're able to wrap him up. Here's some of that misdirection to Query. Ran a lot of yards just to gain a few. Just doing little chunk plays at the moment. They're going to have to find a way to try to get more explosive, whether it's with speed to the outside or maybe go back to those Alex Wilkerson runs to the inside if they can get the right opening. And it does look like we do have someone shaken up on the play. That's number three, Chase Query. That yeah, Query just ran the ball, and it's an official's timeout to give him a chance. Walk off the field. They have a excellent training staff that they brought in for the Show Me Bowl, as always. The Valley fans here in the cold hoping they can go home to St. Genevieve with a record-tying state title this afternoon. They're off on the right foot so far. Still trying to wrap my head around how both of these teams, regardless of who ends up winning here today, would have a double-digit <laughs> title win, if that's the case. Almost like being a St. Louis Cardinals fan or a Yankees fan, ain't it? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> but either way, that play's blown up there, and that's by number 27, who was just anticipating Wilkerson. That's Cohen Gibbs on the tackle. It'll be fourth down, and Lamar will be forced to punt. A three and out was not the answer they were looking for. as Wilkerson goes back to punt, but I don't think Valley's buying. There's no one back there to return. Little knuckleballer. This Great. one's going to bounce. 
great bounce. That's exactly what Lamar needed because that had the heights for that punt from Wilkerson, but it doesn't necessarily have the distance until it hit the turf. And the wind knocked it down just a little bit. It is blowing up from the south. Not super strong, but enough to keep old Glory flying on her pole. And this is going to set up for another Warriors offensive drive. And at the moment, it's kind of shaping into, since there's still a minute left in the first quarter, a nightmare scenario for this Tigers team. If this trend continues into the second quarter, I would not want to be a fly on the wall in that locker room for Lamar. They got to be pretty frustrated right now. Here comes the rush. Oh, what a beauty of a ball. Fighting through a defender, and it's intercepted. Got a little bit too greedy with that one. That's number three, Chase Query, who was able to come up with that interception. Overthrew his intended man just a little bit too much. Trying to grab a little bit too much at one time. But either way, this is the opportunity that the Lamar Tigers needed to get things turned around. And all the pushing and shoving there, I, I think the officials just let him play through it since they were both initiating the contact as opposed to one side more than the other. There's some scenarios where that could have been called either offensive or defensive pass interference, but what a big turnaround here for Query as he gets his team the ball back. Now first and 10 from the 30, and they're back to Wilkerson. Wilkerson through tackles, and he fights for the first down. That was a powerful run. Great heads up by Wilkerson there. He made three different defenders miss on that way to a first down. That'll get him up over 32 yards rushing here in the first quarter. Momentum has swung back the way of Lamar. And for the Tigers, that's really all you can hope for. I feel like they, their offense sets up really well once Wilkerson can get those wheels churning as Query gets it here. Yeah, Query tripped over his own man. He did get back to the line of scrimmage, so second down and 10 upcoming, and that will probably be the last play of quarter number one. But what a good first quarter it has been. And talk about another Fowler getting on the stat sheet. That was Joshua Fowler with the tackle. Met him right at the line of the game. Well, Valley Catholic got the start it wanted. Can Lamar make adjustments in the second quarter as they start this drive off an interception? We'll be back in just a moment at the 2023 Show Me Bowl in Columbia, the Class 2 edition, right after this on Misha.tv. At the end of the first quarter, Valley has the lead, two touchdowns, both of them through the air, as Grant Fowler has gone six for eight through the air to start out, and I think you got to be pretty pleased there if you're head coach Nagger you got to be pleased, and regardless, I'm curious to see what kind of adjustments Lamar has here into the second quarter because there's a lot of changes that need to happen if they want to get back in this one. Now, there was one change. That's the first time we've seen Cooper Hahn get a carry today. This Valley defense has been really tough to break for Lamar. Number 78, Zachary Nager, was the person who met the running back there in the hole. The defensive line has basically plugged the hole wherever it's happened for the most part, except for a few designed runs from Wilkerson. Now in this third down and long, Coach Bayshore wants to talk things over with his team, and this is a pivotal point in the game. You, you start this drive off an interception. You have to seize the moment, take this momentum with you, and put, put something together on the bright side for Lamar. They will get the ball to start the second half. I, I think that's something that maybe might come back to bite Valley, but right now it's working out for them because they got a two-touchdown lead. If you're Coach Bayshore, I feel like you have to have the conversation with quarterback Alex Wilkerson and see what they can muster up to get something going through the air because I understand that this team is run first. They want to pound it through your throat. At the same time, though, what exactly is going to become of it if they can't get anything on this third down conversion that's going to be tough sledding? I don't want to say it's getting to the point if you get this down to a 
if you can't get the first down, you get to a fourth and five, you might be in four down territory. You might be forced to that because we've seen what Valley Catholic has done so far. Just the one mistake, but they were looking to score once again. Wilkerson hands off. Second level, free, and got the first down on third down. What a powerful run. All at the hands of Logan Kish. Talk about a desperation run from Kish. It looked like he was going to get wrapped up there, but he was able to keep those legs churning and shoot for a first down. And this is the first time that the Lamar Tigers are going to have the ball on the Valley Catholic side of things. Let's see what they can make of it. Now two for four on third down on the afternoon. Keep mentioning some sort of pass plays, but I think Coach Bayshore is trying to tell me, hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> Going to keep this thing running. Wilkerson. Oh, there's the pass play. Finds his man. It's complete. And that's Googie with the reception. Great run. Great run. Great route towards that sideline. Once again, they love to, it seems like they're trying to get involved with the corner routes and post routes early on. He's able to find his man. Good look to Googie just now outside the red zone. Wilkerson up the middle. Gain of four. That's a great chunk play by Wilkerson there, and they were lucky to get it through in that manner because you could tell they had six defenders on the Warriors side that were going to be trying to rush and break through that offensive line. So the fact that you're able to get four on that chunk play, it's going to help out in the long term. It's trying to get towards that red zone still. I think Lamar's focus should be here to avoid no gain or, of course, loss scenarios. you got to get something each time. No field goal attempts on the year for Lamar, so no matter what, I think they're thinking four-down territory. Gookie in motion, takes the handoff. Gain of two, and another third down upcoming where the Tigers are two for four. Great wrap-up there on that play by the defensive line. Seemed at some point you just have to know and anticipate what the Tigers are going to be doing. But as the game churns on, and to, to mention the weather again, as it gets colder, it's going to get tougher and tougher to tackle these players, especially when they're just trying to run it in between the tackles over and over again. Also it becomes more difficult for receivers. Hands continue to get colder throughout the afternoon. Wilkerson takes it on third down. He gets to the 20-yard line, but he's going to be short. He needed to get to the 23 to get the first down, and if you're Lamar, you've got to go for it here. I don't think there's any questions about it that you have to go for it. Once again, that's Zachary Nager who initially plugged that hole. Yeah, I don't think you can drive a golf cart through the holes now, <laughs> Andy Cameron. <laughs> Not at the moment, or at least Nager is trying to do anything he can to prevent it. Yeah, how about the adjustments here for Valley Catholic? Well, they have given up some yards on this drive. Six-man rush coming again. Option play. Oh, they read it like a book. Down goes Googie, and the ball will go back to Valley. And once again, that six-man rush was exactly what needed to be dialed up for that play call. Not necessarily too sure if I agree with it there. However, regardless, it's going to give this Valley Catholic team yet again another chance. And as you see, that pitch just came a little bit too late. I don't necessarily know what the anticipation was there. Wilkerson, I think, should have held on to it and tried to cut it up himself. Or maybe hand it off initially on the triple option, but... It's easy to Monday morning quarterback. And Googie, right after getting tackled, has to go out to this near side of the field and play cornerback. Yeah, and, but not only is he a leader on offense, he's one of the leaders of the defense as well. And this one's wide open. On the money and off to the races. 20, tripped up 10, 5, touchdown. Third one of the day for Grant Fallert. And the nightmare scenario continues for this Lamar Tigers team and especially the defense right there. That throw, once again, right in the bucket for, for Gag. How about Gag's ability, though, to break that tackle? The ability to stay up on his feet. And as you see it here, Fowler's going to drop back. Just a simple drop, two-step from the shotgun. And that delivery of the ball there, I mean, you couldn't have placed it anywhere better. And to your point, James, 
that ability to stay on your feet, to stay balanced and get into the end zone, great day to be a Valley Catholic warrior at the moment. Gig now up to 98 yards receiving. That is his second touchdown reception of the game. Third passing touchdown for Fallert. And Bassler, or rather that's Kuhn, makes it a 21-point game. Valley in front of Lamar. Well, the second quarter has not disappointed. There's 8.07 remaining until halftime, and we'll step aside here on Misha.TV. We'll be back in a moment from Faroe Field. And once again, Fowler dials it up deep. Now there's another booming kickoff for Isaac Bassler. That one, well, not necessarily into the wind because the wind is really a huge factor here, but that's now two touchbacks for him, and that's pretty incredible what we're seeing him put together. I was just about to say, you can't, or I can't stress enough how important it is if you have a kicker that can do that for your special teams unit. Basically, it's just a reset where the defense knows that they're going to start things off at the 20 to try to battle Lamar. And it's really becoming desperate, too, because Lamar can't really do anything in any sort of matter to get up the field further. And they need some sort of exciting, exhilarating play to happen. Yeah, that they do. Can Wilkerson find an answer here? Cuts to the right side. And he got popped. Fallert with a great tackle from behind. He, ran, he basically read that play perfectly. Wilkerson tried to shake away from him, but couldn't get up, strung loose. I don't think Lamar has been this frustrated in quite a few weeks. you, you got to go all the way back to week four when they played Seneca on their only loss of the season, and that was against a class three team. Wilkerson through the air on second down, has the completion It's going to be Chase Query with the reception there on the far side of the field. I like that they are starting to get more involved in the passing game because clearly, especially on those outsides, it's working for them. Yeah, they haven't blown out anything over the top yet, but the fact that they're allowing those chunk plays to happen, it's at least giving them movement and momentum. First reception for Query today. Good for six yards and a third down and two upcoming. Can the Valley crowd get loud? The carry on third down is good. That'll make Valley three for six on third down conversions. Great design play for Wilkerson there, or rather make Lamar. No, great design play for, for Wilkerson there because I, I think a lot of the time when they see that six-man rush front for the Valley Catholic Warriors, they just want to put the ball in his hands and try to squeeze through the tackles. Valley's defense has been super impressive today. It's Wilkerson with pressure. It is caught and a good block and a seam to the house. Lamar's on the board here in the second quarter. Chase Query on his second reception of the drive takes it in for six. And looks what happens when they start to open up that playbook, you know. Now that they're starting to mix things up, it's pushing that defense back, keeping them on their toes. But that entire thing, great route by Query there, but that's all on Wilkerson because he knew that after he deliver, delivered that throw, he was going to get popped. Definitely happened, but it was worth the reward. And look at the block here. That was an excellent block laid down by Trace Woolridge. That's what allowed the touchdown to happen as... Lamar strikes and out for the extra point. Jose Juarez. It is up and it is good. Cameron, did I look at that right? Did Juarez line straight up with it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Like back in the day when in the NFL they had the square shoes. Mm hmm. Yeah, no, I think you're absolutely right. He did line straight up with it there. Just basically straight toe to ball contact instead of doing a more flat-footed approach. It worked for him there, though. So, you know, if that's 
If that's what it's going to be, then you just got to give it to him. And the Lamar crowd has to be happy. As, as we saw Juarez down the sideline, I, he had regular cleats on. That did not have kind of the nub, if you will. I mean, you got to go back almost 60 years in the NFL to, mm. to, to see the old photographs where you have this square block on the front of your shoe. I don't know if those would even be allowed now. I, I highly doubt it. When you, when you talk about anticipation with what that would be, you talk about a cheat code. That's basically a sledgehammer that you're putting right on the front of whatever your kicking foot is, and you're just nailing the ball every time. The one disadvantage, though, is that you don't get much distance. <laughs> no. That was a high rainbow arc. High power, not a lot of distance whatsoever. But it got the job done, and now this roller across the ground is picked up, and a big tackle levied by Zandon Baker Sheet for Lamar. Number 36 was the return man there for the Warriors. Was Preston Lurk, the senior. Yes, and he, great, I'm going to give him his props because for a second there I thought the ball was going to get loose, but for him to be able to control that and come to the ground, definitely needed because for the rest of the time, look for anyone on the Lamar defense to be scratching, punching, anything they can do to get that ball out. Three-man front, two in the box for the Tigers. Handoff. And an opening for Viox. What a move by Viox there. It looked like he was going to get caught up on that edge with nowhere to go. And then he kind of made the Lamar defenders look silly there as he was able to stride forward across midfield for the first down. That's the first positive yard rush for Valley this afternoon. They were at three rushes for negative six yards. Now Viox sits with 16. He had negative two going into that rush. Look at the power. Look how he made that man miss and pushes forward. And a stiff arm there at the end, too. If there weren't two other defenders there by Lamar, he might have been trouncing into the end zone. With pressure. Fowler throws it incomplete. And there is some good discipline on that from the edge rush. They could have levied a huge hit on Fowler's. Intended man there was Ryan Fallert, and for a second I thought it was going to get there. just didn't have enough zip on it. But that is that dialed-up blitz for the Lamar defense that I've been wondering when it's going to be happening because Grant Fallert has had all day for the most part to throw back there. As soon as he had some pressure on him, he was off his mark. Defense, 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 defense. Ryan Fallert in motion. And pass goes behind Colin Henderson. Definitely just didn't look like they were on the same page there. I think that Grant Fowler wanted him to come back more towards that out-of-bounds line on the near side of the field. And it looked like their intended receivers wanted to push things up a little bit. It could be the cold is now playing a factor with the quarterback's fingers. Going back to that great run by Alex Viox, he got a stinger himself. And in the cold, he feel those more. Uh, Wilkerson, rather, Fallert around the edge. Won't get the first down on third and ten. But if you're Valley here and kind of in the same situation as Lamar, you don't want to give him the ball back. And fourth and seven is very doable here. This is going to be the first attempt for Valley on the day for a fourth down conversion. We're going to see what they draw up. Also, with personally how this offense has been moving today, I don't, I'm don't. i not surprised that they're trying to go for it. On f well, Fowler's also yeah. the punter. Oh, my. That went straight up the elevator shaft. Not a great bounce either. I, I think for the rest of the game, depending on what kind of scenarios play out for Coach Nagger and the, and the coaching staff here, I feel like you might as well have gone for it there because that punt, yes, it was high, but it only went about 10 yards. I believe 12 yards is the official net on it. And that's a rarity for Grant Fowler. He's averaging 32 yards per punt this year. Or at least maybe try to do a line drive kick. Go Ray Guy style. Into Not the I corner, coffin corner. Not ideal situation, but it is the ideal situation for Lamar, who's trying to do anything they can to get back in this one. They just got a present. Absolutely. They also will get the ball to start the second half. You have a sustained drive here that takes some time off the clock as Wilkerson keeps it through the spin cycle, and he is tackled from behind. 
That is the second or third time on a Wilkerson-designed run where he's done that spin. I don't know if that's something with coaching where they're trying to see if it can play as a diversion, maybe confuse that defensive line. <laughs> but either way, to your point, spin cycle indeed. He's <laughs> trying to do whatever he can to throw him off. He was stopped by Cohen Gibbs. Now more presence on the line from the Warriors. The handoff to the edge. Kish. First down and a convoy. Across midfield. And that was a solid run there from Logan Kish. Great move by Kish. However, it seems as if there's a scuffle occurring right now. Uh, there's a little pushing and shoving after the play. I don't see a flag on the field. I think they're going to let him continue on and this is a high emotions affair nonetheless i was just about to say great control by the referees there when there's high emotions like this in the state championship game unless anything gets out of hand i feel i feel like to a certain extent you just got to let them play well and for the most part anyone at the state championship keeps a pretty level head because you don't want to make those mistakes as wilkerson Runs right through the defense on a gain of 12. I think that cold is starting to play a factor, James, because over once you're running like this over and over and over again, especially up the middle, in between the tackles, that's a lot of butting heads. That's a lot of pinched fingers. I think they're starting to get tired of wrapping up. Great block by Kish on that side as well as you see him push up and after that block happened it was all up to Wilkerson to basically find anything he can to muster up as much yards as he can gain. Kish takes the rock on the first down to the 10 tripped up at the five it'll be first and goal for Lamar. This offensive line unit for the Lamar Tigers has finally figured out where their leverage needs to be. Two huge back-to-back -back runs and don't be surprised if they go back to either Wilkerson or Kish here again to try to punch it into the end zone. Absolutely. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Take another look at it here, Cameron. And it's all set up on that first block. All set up on that first block. Great play by the guards and center to basically push that hole into fruition. Illegal procedure called against Lamar. That's a costly penalty that at first and goal from the two. May not think that a five-yard difference makes a whole lot there, but that's more than a doubling up of your distance to go. Almost a tripling up. Ball now going to be placed at the seven. Still wouldn't be surprised if they go back to that run unit because of how it's been working out for them lately. And when you have four tries to get it done, that's what we'll see here. Yeah, Wilkerson pushing the pile along the left side. Back with in the five-yard line. Wilkerson getting close to 70 yards rushing on the day. And once again, regardless of how this plays out, there have been no field goal attempts for Lamar this season. So you'd have to think no matter what, they're going to try to push this thing into the end zone. And regardless, if for some reason this Warriors defense puts an immaculate effort and stops them, at least if you're Lamar, they're starting inside their own five. You also take the clock down quite a bit as well on the direct snap Kish gets basically back to where he was initially with that first run so now we do it all over again it's going to be a third and two to go but once again more than likely I think they're going to do two run plays back to back but don't be surprised if maybe they try to insert some sort of short pass to throw them off their feet Kish. Can the pile push him across the goal line? They can! Lamar with back-to-back -back scores after 21 unanswered put up by the Warriors. And all of a sudden here, we have a ball game here, James. I mean, when, when you look at that scenario, you can't stress it enough when you're talking about the cold. Those runs, they go back to back to back. Look at Kish pushing forward in the pile. Great job by the offensive line to basically get in front of him, give him a little tush push of his own to get into the end zone. And I'm just here for the Jose Juarez extra point attempts. <laughs> he was pumped up after he made that last one. Directly in front once again. 
Yeah, look at how high that extra point goes. It's working for him. You'll have to get it not give credit where credit's due. I don't even know what you could put inside your cleats to keep that from jamming up your toe, except just maybe practice and get it all calloused on the inside. Lots that is tape. something else. Maybe lots of tape. That might be the only thing that I can think of. But regardless, I'd be pumped up to get, <laughs> to get that kick, too, with that kind of formation and style. Yeah, Juarez, that makes him now 54 of 66 on the year for extra points. And he gets there quite a few times with how many touchdowns this Lamar unit scores. Curious to see what kind of adjustments the Warriors have on offense now because previously they had had quite a bit of time to throw. That hasn't been the case from here on out. Maybe they try to have a heavy dose of Vioxx in the backfield. Lamar does have two timeouts. Valley has all three of their timeouts. I think this is Lamar right where they wanted to be considering how the first quarter went. Fielded from the 15. Lots of room. Once again, it's Henderson. Had a big return on the opening kickoff of the Class 2 Show Me Bowl. And that's good field position. Just 60 yards here for Valley to cover to keep Lamar at arm's length. Great starting field position for Valley Catholic. One thing that I would have loved to see with Henderson there is if he would have used his blockers a little bit more to his advantage. If he would have been able to go to that outside edge that those blockers have been showing, I think he would have had a chance to get some more. A buck 53 remaining in the first half. Fowlert. Big tackle and another hit laid down by Chase Quarry. We've called his name a few times here in the second quarter, haven't we? Absolutely, we have. He had that huge interception that basically sparked a lot of life to get these Lamar Tigers back into the swing of things. Also not to mention the touchdown reception. And not surprised there that Valley Catholic starts off with a run just to get Grant Fowler back in the swing of things, get him in motion before maybe they try to air it out again. I'd say maybe go for the first down and then chuck it deep a couple times here's Viox through traffic first down and Valley Catholic will take their first time out of the half Viox was just a great plant and cut there he was able to basically shake Alex Wilkerson out of his boots there a little bit and move the chains here for the Warriors and I'm mistaken they did not take the timeout the clock stopped to move the chains And this is interesting that Coach Nagger does not want to save some time for his team. I find that pretty surprising, too, especially if you have the timeouts. Why not use them? And right now they're not even playing with any urgency to get back up to the line. And now they call the timeout after, goodness, after 15 seconds comes off after the end of that last play. Questionable management for sure on that one. Well, you can't take them with you into the locker room. So you might as well burn them. Unless Valley is worried potentially about giving too much time on the clock back to Lamar if they score. But that would take some sort of miraculous play, especially with the solid special teams play we've seen off the kicking game for Isaac Bassler, almost a guaranteed touchback every time. I understand the, I guess, urgency that they're trying to play here. Maybe they're just trying to experiment because for the first time today, we're seeing Fowler run to the outside of the tackles on multiple times in this drive. He's getting about six to seven yards every time he has that carry. So maybe they're trying to see where they can exploit some of their weaknesses. But regardless, you would want as much time as you possibly can in order to have a chance of scoring again. Maybe we'll see Fowler go through the air. He will. Oh, good block. Sets him up, and it's incomplete. Now Great. it's third down. Great offensive line play there to give Fowler the time to try to figure something out, but the coverage was even better. Cooper Hahn was the, per was the man on that play with the deflection. Yeah, Hahn listed third in the depth chart here on the defense, and we've seen him 
into the game quite a bit. The clock has stopped. Interesting play here. They're having number 87, Rourke Dillon, come out on this play. He's been their biggest disruptor up front. And now another timeout burned by the Warriors. This has been an interesting drive. This has not felt like it's in the groove of how this game has gone. It, a lot of times come off the clock and there's just 24 seconds remaining in the first half. And you have to remember if they would have taken a timeout earlier, we're probably looking at close to 40 seconds still left on the clock instead of 24. It may not seem like a lot, but that's at least two Hail Marys to the end zone. Two Hail Marys, a couple quick plays. Especially if you're angling towards the end zone, maybe even get three out of it. Well, and Kuhn is two for three this year on field goals, so you would have, to, of course, to get the first down at least to get him in range as longest as 37 this season. Valley is two for three on third down conversions today. We'll see what Fowler dials up for his team. He's going to run it. Got the first down, spins through a tackle, and then got manhandled to the ground by T.J. Ansley. I think this Valley Catholic offense has figured something out with Fowler running to the outside because I don't think the defense for Lamar has been able to stop him before at least getting five yards every single time. Now you have to burn that final timeout. There's just 10 seconds on the clock. A field goal from here would be about 42 yards, 43 yards. One thing I will challenge the coaching staff for Valley Catholic again is why so slow to calling the timeout. When Fowler was first tackled, there was 17 seconds left on the clock. You let seven seconds go off before Or earlier, called. under a minute. There, mm -hmm. there was a time about 15 seconds came off the clock, and that's at least a couple more plays. I think what you're left with here now is maybe you get one shot to get closer towards the out-of-bounds or to the end zone, and then after that, you're going to have to settle with a field goal if you can't get anything. This is interesting, bunching up everyone. And on the line of scrimmage, look for, now there you go. Trips receivers to the left. Talk about trickery. Pass. And there's a penalty flag. They blow the play dead. I don't, well there wasn't a penalty flag, there's just a whistle. And it, they're starting to send people into the locker rooms for halftime. Are, are they just going to let this one run off? Are they saying that the pass across the field, the receiver's knee was down? Great call by the officials there because, to, to your point, I believe his knee was down. And when you're talking about in college or in high school, as soon as that goes down, your side it is down. Well, that was an interesting way to... Uh, into the first half, a little disjointed, but <laughs> Lamar now will head into the locker room down by seven, Valley up by seven, and we'll be back with the third quarter in just a little bit here at the 2023 Show Me Bowl Class 2 edition on Misha.TV. See you in a moment, folks. Well, it's been an exciting first half here as the Valley Catholic Warriors have the lead over Lamar, 21-14. As we welcome back inside of Faro Field, James Stanley with Cameron Connor. And so far, Cameron, it's uh, been a very heavy run game, but uh, on the Lamar side of things, well, meanwhile, we've seen some struggles from Valley Catholic. It's really been a story of two separate quarters. In the first quarter, Valley Catholic came out electric. They came out warm, and they were able to put up 21 quick points, and then it became a completely different tale of the tape in the second quarter when Lamar absolutely dominated it there. And you look at these totals here at the moment, 
Pass yards for Lamar at 103, rush yards at 140, and first downs at 10 were on Valley Catholic side of things. 185 yards through the air from Grant Fowler, 36 rush yards, 8 first downs for Valley, and then also that one costly turnover that really ignited things for Lamar from Grant Fowler. Yeah, absolutely, and that was uh, Chase Query who got the interception, the one turnover, the one mistake committed by Valley Catholic. It's going to be important to remember that Lamar will get the ball to start the second half, and uh, we'll see what adjustments they make out of the locker room. But to close out that first half, that was a very baffling final minute and just not a lot of great time management done by Valley Catholic. Yeah, we don't have the exact totals on it, but I feel as if it has to be at least 20 to 30 seconds that probably slipped away because timeouts were instead of being rushed they, they were hesitant to call timeouts and valley catholic went especially while driving i think they left some points out there and they might be kicking themselves for it since lamar gets the ball and that's lamar in black and red on the far side of the field they looked a little i would say fired up out there uh, to, to say the least and talking earlier this this week with coach bayshore about you know his team's ability to overcome adversity. He said there's some times when his players would get more upset about things than than he was, and they would uh, they would find ways to you know just put their nose to the grindstone and find ways to overcome that adversity. And we saw that a lot in the middle of the season with the backups stepping up into big roles and filling the shoes of some of these big time playmakers for him. You look across the depth chart, there are a few guys that uh, started out on JV that are now you know starters on the varsity level whether it's at the middle linebacker spot Eli Googie or TJ Ansley as his backup both those guys were JV players to start out the season and uh, we've already seen you know quite a bit of uh, some of the depth of, of Lamar definitely making an effect in that second quarter and speaking about your mention of nose to the grindstone for Lamar they I have to give them props even though they did open up the playbook to the passing side of things especially once that second quarter got underway the constant runs up the middle clearly wore the defensive line of Valley Catholic down. And because of the cold weather, I think they just got tired of hitting guys. Leading rushers for Lamar, it's Kish with 67 yards on one carry and a touchdown. Alex Wilkerson has carried the ball 12 times, has 65 yards. It looks like the rest of the team has left the locker room here for Valley Catholic. I imagine that has to be the offense because the defense got their job done in the first quarter. That allowed Lamar to, or rather Valley Catholic, to jump out to a 21-0 lead. And now it's been two straight unanswered touchdowns scored by the Lamar Tigers. Even though the Valley Catholic offense struggled, and especially in that last possession, definitely I think could have left or left some points out there, don't be surprised if they do, if we're going to take a positive from it, use more runs, whether it's Vox or keeps by Fowler here in the second half, because clearly they figured out that they could get anywhere between five to seven yards per run, at least from what was given to them in that sample size. And if they're able to keep this lead, they're going to need to muster up as much clock and take possession of that whenever they can. Well, if you want an opportunity to watch this game over again and again and again, fans, you can purchase your in the history books for Valley Catholic. If they win it, they will tie Webb City for the most number of state championships by any school in the Show Me State. Definitely would be great company to be with alongside Webb City. When you look at how highly touted either of these programs are and the fact that they've met each other so often in this game, it's just kind of a pick and choose as to who's going to get it, and I think we should be in store for a pretty great second half. Well, we're going to step aside for a couple minutes here as we get set for the second half. When we return, Lamar will have the kickoff to start things out in the second half, trailing by seven, but they're on a 14-0 tear. 14-0 tear. We'll be back in a moment here from Faro Field in Columbia on Misha.tv. Both teams ready to take the field in the second half as I welcome you back into Columbia, Missouri at the 2023 Show Me Bowl. Valley Catholic leads at 21-14. You're just now catching up with us. It was a 14-0 lead for Valley at the end of the first. Then they scored one more to start the second quarter. But since then, it's been all Lamar. James Stanley here with Cameron Connor. We appreciate you stopping by with us on this chilly Saturday evening. The officials break the huddle, and this Lamar sideline is getting pretty loud down there, Cameron. They absolutely are, and it's definitely going to be needed. Still down one score here. Score right now, 21-14 to 14 in favor of the Warriors. But to your point, great management by the coaching staff of Lamar for them to be able to get this ball and have this opportunity to tie things up here at the get-go of the second half. 
We'll see once more the howitzer of a leg that Isaac Bassler has. He has two touchbacks already this evening. Second half underway, and this one will be returned by Kish, but not before he barely got back to the 20-yard line. I bet Kish wishes, especially with how rough he got tackled there, that that kick would have soared into the end zone because they're still at the same place they are regardless of where, of what the outcome would have been. Wilkerson in the first half, 4 for 5 for 103 yards through the air. His longest completion was for 69 yards. And he found Quarry twice, including one of those times to the end zone. Googie in motion. Wilkerson drives the pile. That's a good start for the second quarter for Lamar. Great first play and push. Once again, that offensive line in that second quarter finally found their leverage and how they could push around the Valley Catholic Warriors defensive line. So not surprised that they start this thing off with a Wilkerson keep. It's what grinded down that defensive line in the first half. I think that's what they're hoping for for the outcome here again. Jared Bayshore told us earlier this week that this group of seniors has been one of the most resilient groups that he has ever coached. Can the resiliency get him a win here in the state championship as they pick up the first down on the sweep? Cooper Hahn with the carry. Cooper Hahn was just able to get to that outside edge, basically racing and challenging anyone else on the defensive side. And, hey, I'm going to get here this fast. Let's see if you can meet me. He was able to win that battle. Fresh set of downs. A little bit of confusion there on that defensive line. Maybe an opportunity for Wilkerson to take advantage. Uh, here comes a penalty flag flying in from behind out of the pocket of Kyle Slusher. Here's the call. Spoke too soon. It is holding against Lamar. Holding, holding on the offense. On the offense. In yard, in yard, in the spot. After you were getting some decent chunk plays there on the offensive side of things, definitely not what you want here. Pushes you back practically where they, where they get the drive started. Third penalty called against Lamar. They had two penalties in the first half for a loss of 10 yards. Both of them were on the offensive line, an illegal procedure and a false start. Wilkerson, first down and 20, and just over the hands of his intended target. Intended man was Chase Query there. I think that they had him. Wilkerson definitely had the time. He had the pocket. He just missed Query by throwing it over his head by just a couple of yards. Yeah, and I'm surprised they went for the deep ball on first down and 20. And obviously, you want to. You know, make up the yards you just lost on the penalty. But now you're not only down in the downs, but you're at a loss of 10 where you started. Regardless, I think Wilkerson's kicking himself there because if that one would have ended up in the hands of Query, I think we're talking about a touchdown. Gookie off the screen, somehow held on to it and somehow gets out of one tackle, but the second one in open field is no good for Gookie and Grant Fowler's on the stump. Isaac Bassler was also in on that that stop too. Great composure by Googie to able to even be able to hold on to that thing. But regardless, the defense for the Warriors is all over it. Third down and a country mile to go. First possession for Lamar of the second half. Wilkerson. Hit as he throws. It is caught by Googie. Looking for the block on the edge, and he's going to get free. Somehow on third down, Lamar gets very close to the line to gain. They're not going to get it, but this is interesting here for Lamar. Do you consider going for it? 
great display of speed there by Googie. The ability, I don't think people sometimes understand how tough that is. When he decided to make that cut to make a workaround, he basically ran five yards back in the opposite direction before he was able to get to that this fourth and short situation. Valley's going to burn a timeout, their first of the half. I don't know if they had everyone lined up personnel-wise where they wanted There was no one back to receive, and it appears that Lamar is going to punt. But the problem is your punter is also your quarterback, so that leaves a lot of questions unanswered for Valley, and especially if not everyone's on the same page, it could be easy for Lamar to convert on fourth down on a fake. And regardless, Lamar has to be really careful with their decision-making here because if they d decide to go for it and don't get it, you're setting up Valley Catholic licking their chops with great field position to get things going. Now this play almost feels like it's for seizing momentum here in the second half. Valley Catholic once again not buying that it's going to be an actual attempted punt. No one back to return. Wilkerson, oh, beauty. Bounces at the 18, rolls to the 14. And that's just the right situation there, James. Especially, I understand maybe if it's a different kind of scenario or maybe they're down by further to be aggressive and go for it. But when you're on, when you're on what would have been your own side of the field on the defensive end and you're backed up that far, it just makes no sense. Not an ideal situation for Lamar on the offensive side of things. Struggling penalties and not great play calls to counteract it. And here we go. Valley Catholic has a chance to extend their lead. Valley just cannot afford to cause a mistake and or to commit a mistake. The handoff for Viox. Solid carry on first down. Good starting play of the left side of the tackles there for Viox. Once again, I won't be surprised if it is a more run-heavy mindset for Valley, especially if it's been working for him how it did at the tail end of the first half. A lot of props here to Lamar for not biting on the hard counts so far today. Been very disciplined up front as Fowler will take it for himself, follows the blockers down the edge, 30 to the 40 yard line and brought down near midfield. I was telling you that this offense had found something in the coaching staff with what they were doing with Fowler with the design to keep runs that basically set him up to go to either the left or the right side of the tackles. It was only working for about seven or eight earlier, but here, as you see him run to that left side of the offensive line, two guys pull in front, great blocks, and he's able to make a cut up field and put a damper on that defense. It was Junior Romero on the stop for Lamar. Fowler's going to keep it again. Down that left edge. I believe he got the first down. Another solid carry there for the quarterback. If you're the coaching staff for Lamar, you have to do whatever you can to plant on those edges and not give Fowler this room because this is once again a facility where he's getting positive yardage every single time they run this play. Right. We see another run here from Grant Fowler. Lamar is not bringing the pressure on the defensive line. Maybe an edge rush here. And another run. Oh, that time, what a beauty. Snagged him in open field. Mario De La Pena tacks him down on a loss of four. Great play by De La Pena there. The, the ability to get into the backfield after that offensive line for Valley had been pretty formidable so far in this one. Definitely what they needed to see to stop Fowler because that was going to be basically the th third consecutive play where Fowler was running to that left side. And De La Pena built like a linebacker. Got a great jump off the defensive line. Here comes the pressure on the pass play. Fowler hit as he throws, has it completed. 
And what a grab there from Colin Henderson, his second reception of the Show Me Bowl. Fantastic awareness to flex that pocket. Started off in the pocket there was Grant Fowler, and then just to roll to that edge, basically keep those defenders on their toes, slide up into the pocket, and deliver a great pass to the middle of the field. Third and short. Fowler keeps it. And the penalty flag out of the pocket. Looks like someone jumped. Of Kyle Slusher. This is a huge penalty. Although if you're Valley, I think you're in four down territory regardless. I would have to agree with you, James. I was just about to say, especially since they're pushing so far to this Rebel side of the field, why not go for it? it and you can't afford really to give momentum back to Lamar. Absolutely not. I think that's one of the more dangerous things at the point where Valley's at right now. They haven't scored a touchdown in what feels like an eternity. To the sideline, and it's picked up. Colin Henderson trots into the end zone. Put that on his highlight reel because he just got a moss. <laughs> There's no other way to look at it. Once he, once he has that ability to reach up over the cornerback, and you see here as Fowler looks back, drops back, clean pocket, about a seven-step drop, delivers to that side of the field. It's underthrown, but when you have that size of Henderson, he reaches up over the top, makes another man miss into the end zone for the touchdown. That's one of the best plays I think we've seen out of the showy bowl so far. He had a reception like that similar in the playoffs, so... That was great elevation, great concentration to hold on to the ball, and that's the first touchdown for Valley Catholic after the two unanswered put up by Lamar. 28-14, to 14, and there's six and a half minutes to go in quarter number three of the Class 2 Show Me Bowl. Curious to see what Lamar responds with next after this one because what, what we saw similar to the first half was Valley Catholic started out fast and as the game went on they slowly wore themselves out once again we're probably mentioning the cold as a factor for that but regardless Lamar can't wait to the fourth quarter this time they're gonna have to figure out a way to respond once again down by two scores but their largest deficit was 21 points the student section is living it up right now here at Furrow Field Got all the blankets and the coats out. Got some gloves as well, looks like. It's pretty cold out here. <laughs> Tell me about it. Not for us. You're not sitting in front of the... I was about to say, we're lucky. I say, you're behind the window. <laughs> getting all in front this, of the heater. I'm actually working up a sweat, not going to lie. <laughs> getting all this crisp air as winter is coming upon us here in mid-Missouri. Another touchback, third for Isaac Bassler as he just boots that one out of the back of the end zone. We mentioned it a lot in the first half, but the ability to pin a ball back deep like that, it's just a perfect scenario that you want, especially at the high school level when you're talking about special teams where kicks are probably one of the most volatile things where anything can happen at this level, especially if you get the right blocks in place. So to basically have a hard set that is attainable for the Valley Catholic defense to set them up, definitely an ideal situation to be in. Wilkerson carries on first down. And a yard shy of converting the chains. Wilkerson able to just plow through there. Good on Grant Fowler, the quarterback, and also safety in order to read and get that tackle, but <laughs> it wasn't without some punishment first. That's one of the strengths that plays up here for Wilkerson. He can punish you on offense and defense. Out of the triple option, Wilkerson keeps it. Got the first down on forward progress as he is stopped by Jacob Elbert. I think I'm going to have to put a, spot, a, a pause on the spin cycle for Wilkerson because I think if he didn't do that, he might have gotten an extra couple of yards. But just that split second of turnaround, it's not necessarily messing up anything happening on the defensive line. And I think they could have gotten a couple more chunk plays out of it. It's interesting to do it when there's no contact. It's almost like trying to sell the fake. As Wilkerson falls forward on first down and 
on the stop for the Warriors, it's Isaac Viox. What I will give Wilkerson props for, if he's going to continue to do that spin, he's got to have impeccable balance. Because if I personally tried to do that, or if I asked anyone else, hey, spin around real quick, as fast as you can, then run in a straight line, I don't think you're going to get that. <laughs> <laughs> Some of us might throw up. Yeah. <laughs> Second and six. Wilkerson, an opening across midfield and into Warrior territory. Great handoff to mix things up by Cooper Hahn there to get to that outside edge. I mean, unbelievable in order to get to that side of the field. This is exactly the kind of big play that Lamar needed in order to hopefully get back into this one. Yeah, my eyes failed me there. Thought we were looking at Wilkerson, but Cooper Hahn on his first rush rips off a big chunk. That's what makes this triple option hard to read sometimes. Hahn. Giving it to him again. Yeah, spun around on that left side. Yeah, identical play of the last one there with Hahn. This time around, the Valley defense was ready to get that one going. And that was number 20, Joshua Fowler, who ended up coming up with the tackle there. He had a big first half getting involved. He's trying to do it again here. Wilkerson on the carry. Not enough for the first down. We'll need three yards to convert on third. Great tackle, too, by number five, Andre Oberle there. Able to basically get that shoestring, and it was just enough to force a third and short situation. Lamar converting 50% of the time today on third down, four for eight. Wilkerson for the first down. Not trying to go back to the spin, but I'm telling you, if he would have done that spin before that keep, he would not have gotten that run. And it's basically identically what I was trying to say. If he's just grabbing these runs, taking them on the quarterback keep immediately and pushing to where he wants to go, he's, he's finding those pockets earlier. He's finding more time, and he found it on that right edge or left edge. Absolutely he did. Fresh set of downs. But there was some movement, and I think they're going to call the false start on Logan Kish. The Valley Catholic fans are loving that penalty that comes at a very unlikely or unlikely time for the Lamar offense. Right when you have the momentum, you're getting something going. That's the last thing you want is a penalty that slows down your momentum. It's their fourth penalty of the contest. Googie takes the handoff on the sweep. And that's a good tackle just to gain a three. Great tackle there by Alex Viox. I see what Googie was trying to do to basically try to stop on a dime like he did earlier in the first half. They got him a lot more chunk yardage, but especially when you're battling a talent like Viox who also can match you with that speed, it just didn't work out for him. to the left corner. I believe that was Fowler on the stop. Hahn with the carry. Had a couple big rushes on this drive. And one thing that we will have to keep in mind as it plays out, it looks like some sort of a mist has started to occur out on the field. So keep an eye out for any sort of slipping, sliding that could start to occur if the rain picks up. Yeah, I don't think it's as bad as it was on Thursday night or even yesterday, but... Uh, there's definitely something falling. Falls into Lamar's favor, though, however, because of the fact that this is a run-heavy team. They're going to want to try to keep it on the ground anyways. Uh, Great play again there by Hahn to get... We've seen it similar times, three times in this drive. 
worked out there. But now you're in a fourth and one situation. I don't think there's any other answer. You got to go for it. Yeah, fourth and one down by 20, or rather down by 14. In the waning moments of the third. I'll tell you one thing. The cold is one thing to already have to deal with, but if it starts raining, when I was playing back in the day, this was my least favorite weather. I would have rather taken snow. And here's that. a bobbled snap. A big mistake, and Valley capitalizes. Was over the head of Kish, and he tracked it down. But he's not going to get back to the line of scrimmage. Turnover on downs, first and ten, coming back the other way for the Warriors. Unbelievable play. And look, as the the snaps bobbled, maybe something to do with that rain. It was a high snap, though. They were able to crowd around him immediately, just a swarm of blue. Absolutely devastating for Lamar, who's putting together a really good drive. And now you're putting it back in Valley Catholic's hands, up 28-14. to 14. A moment here for the Warriors to seize momentum. I don't want to say they can put the game away with a touchdown, but it would be a dagger nonetheless. Viox out of one tackle, and then he's just smeared. Rourke Dillon came in to complete that tackle on Viox. It seemed like there wasn't a whole lot of urgency in that run from Viox. I understand that when he ran out to that left side, there was already a lot of defenders around him, but you got to make sure to push up and try to get anything you can instead of slow down. It looks like maybe he was having some trouble with the grip. And in this turf, when it just gets a little wet, it can get slippery, and we'll see how it plays a factor here into quarter number four. 28-14, Valley has 12 minutes to go to tie the state record for state championships we'll see if they can get the job done when we return from columbia missouri at the 2023 misha show me bowl class 2 edition at shopify.com slash youtube audio we head to quarter number four here at Faro field james stanley with cameron connor we're glad to have you here with us on this saturday evening one more game to go after this one it will be class six the cbc cadets Taking on Liberty North as they vie for a state title. I'm sure the last thing that they're looking forward to is this rain in anticipation for their game. It, it, it was dry earlier today for the 11 a.m. kickoff, which Carney absolutely laid it against their opponent. Second and 13 to get us started in the fourth quarter. And I thought there was some movement early. They're going to get the call. Here comes the flag from Kyle Slusher. Penalties are definitely being punishing for both offenses here. Right as soon as they get things going, they're getting pushed back even farther. Not a situation you want to be in, especially when you're trying to win a state championship game. Yeah, that'll be their third penalty. All three of them have been for just five yards. Second down and 18. Lamar can play this softly. But you don't want to play too soft and get burned. From the end zone. On the hit, the ball just came flying out. I think with the anticipation of that pressure, I th believe that Grant Fowler didn't think he could get it to his men with that kind of time, with that kind of situation, so he just kind of threw it somewhere in a safe spot in the middle of the field. Now you don't want to throw it up, but hold on. There is a penalty flag out at the seven-yard line. That's currently Kyle Slusher talking things over with Trace Woolridge. Let's see what the penalty was. About to say, that's that's one you want to decline. You don't want to give him another shot here downfield. Yeah, already a long situation. 18 yards to gain. The line to get to is the 26 for the Warriors.
to the left corner and nowhere to go. Fowler maybe got a yard and it's fourth down and long. Valley Catholic is going to have to punt here deep in their own territory. There's that Lamar answer on defense that we had been looking for, James, to see if they could stop these Fowler-designed runs. They got it done there, and they're going to get the ball back at a costly time, and they need to make something happen quick. Are you surprised at the decision to run there? I was a little surprised, in all honesty, just because of the fact maybe they thought that with the advantages that they'd gotten from that run earlier with how it had drawn up on one of their scoring drives, maybe they thought they were going to catch them by surprise, but tap or heads or tip my cap to that defense. Oh boy, Fallert to avoid the safety will have to roll to his right. And rather that's not Fallert. Fallert listed as the punter. And I think that was Isaac Bassler. Now a penalty flag comes out after the play. I think they're going to get him for some sort of taunting because he spiked the ball down in frustration. Isaac Bassler spiked the ball to the turf and referees are going to punish him for it at a time when that is not something that can happen and look at that altercation with head coach Nager. Yeah, he's giving him an earful right now in and Lamar is going to set up I think inside their the Valley Catholic five yard line now. It, half the distance of the goal he got out to the eight or nine that to the eight yard line so half the distance of the goal on the penalty I understand getting upset as a head coach but you're already in bad situation as it, as it was going to be first and goal anyways and that was a high snap but I think his main message to his team is that you cannot afford to lose your cool and this is as large of a gimme that you could possibly give the Tigers right now absolutely keeper for Wilkerson, tried to step his way out of a tackle, and he'll get one yard to make it second down and goal from the three. Once again, that was Joshua Fowler that initially got that contact and basically saved the touchdown. Lamar trailed 21-0 at the beginning, the front end of the second quarter. They get back within seven. Wilkerson up the gut, trying to plow his way to the end zone. He got there. Touchdown, Lamar. Great heads up play by the offensive line. They saw that Wilkerson was getting caught in his tracks right there. Why not give him a little personal shove just to say, no hard feelings. We got to try to win this game. All the touchdowns here for Lamar are being scored on the south end zone, or rather the north end zone. The Infamous north end zone here for O'Field. And number 56, Aiden Forst, was basically the person who willed Wilkerson into the end zone for that score. You're telling me a little tush push. It works. <laughs> it works until the NFL says it's not allowed anymore, which I don't know if it's going to happen after last year. I don't necessarily know if it can happen because everyone else is trying to do it and they can't figure it out. Penalty flag flies and this could be a crucial five yards here for the kicker Jose Juarez as long as he's able to keep it straight with his technique he's easily had the distance to hit from here yeah we talked about it in the first half he does not come from the side he goes right down the middle and just basically jams his foot into that football and that was a style going back when you know, square shoes were allowed in the NFL or in college when there was no technique no square shoes anymore, but probably a heavily taped big toe. The kick is up, has the distance. It is good. That's unbelievable. And you, you love the <laughs> celebration from the big fella. I love how amped up they get every single time. I'd be amped up, too, if I'm kicking it that way. If it's working, why not keep it going? Yeah, he has done that many times this year, of course, with their team getting into the end zone so many times. But importantly here for Lamar, they're within striking distance. This has been a good game so far in Class 2. What you're going to want if you're going for Valley Catholic here in this one, the Warriors need to muster up some sort of controlled drive where you're not doing anything too risky and taking a lot of time off the clock. That's what's going to have to happen. I mean, when you're looking at this line to gain, I'm 
pretty curious why Alex Viox has not received the ball more, and I'm not going to be surprised if they give it to him here. Seems to me they're trying to use him as a decoy almost. After that first quarter, where he was having a lot of success, they're trying to change things up here, but here we go in between the raindrops. A squib kick on the ground and looked like somebody got to the line a little early. Let's hear from Kyle Slusher on what should be called a illegal procedure. It's like maybe we're not going to hear from him. If they can muster it up, they're going to have to try to find a way to kick this thing deeper than whatever that squib kick was because that is a nightmare scenario to try to recapture once you're pushed back like this. Talk about a decoy. How about just uh, <laughs> booting it deep now? I mean, there, there's a lot of no man's land there. You can't even see the back line that's standing around the 20. There's a huge gap between that middle line and the back. And the kicker is also lined up directly in front of the ball as well. At the line drive, bounces on the turf. And nothing there but for Viox to lay out for it, or rather that's not Viox, but Colin Henderson. That's exactly the best thing that could have happened for the special teams unit for Lamar. After already getting backed up, the fact that, to your point, it was able to squeak right through that middle lane, especially as it's getting more slippery out there, it can be a dangerous situation when that football starts rolling. Yeah, th this rain is going to be steady throughout the rest of this contest, possibly into the Class 6 match as well. This current system that's moving through is actually producing snow up to the northern half of uh, 36 Highway. Fowler out of the gun. They hand it off. That was a rumble there for Viox on a gain of seven. Great first step for the Warriors there by Viox, as we were both anticipating. Those are the kind of runs that are going to win them this football game if they can keep it on the ground and be proficient with it while they're, while they're rolling. You're also going to see a lot more cool, calm, collected poise from the offense. They're going to take a lot more time, maybe 30 to 40 seconds, if they can, do, if they can get it. On the option, Fallert, first down, and some. Great play to that outside edge. Two runs back-to-back. -back. I wouldn't be surprised if they continue to do it, especially if this Lamar defense can't keep track of them. Yeah, how about the blockers here setting up? Maybe not parting the waves like we saw in the first quarter for, for that first drive, I should say, for Lamar. Unbelievable edge block there by the right tackle, Gavin Ogden. Basically set up that whole scenario for Fowler to get loose. Viox at midfield stopped. I'm curious to see how desperate they will get moving forward here because let's say that this ends up shaking into a third down situation. You'd think that they'll probably air it out at some point. However, we do have a player that looks a bit gimpy that's going to the sidelines. It's going to be number 70, who's Jojo De La Pena, center for the team. Four receivers to the left side. Three on the play clock. Down to two, and Valley will have to burn their second time out of the half. On the bright side, if you get to another situation like you were at the end of the first half, if you don't have the timeouts, then you don't have to worry about them. Another thing that I'm, I'm sure that there's some sort of frustration with the coaching staff for why they had to call that timeout. And by the way, look at the, look at the towel here coming out. Everyone's going to be touching that thing to try to get rid of some of this moisture. It, it was dry to start things out, and this game has absolutely changed because of the wetness. And when you factor that in with the cold as well, the hands are just going to start getting stiff. Limbs are going to start getting stiff. So they have to do anything they can to dry up. Second down, eight yards to go. You can see the rain coming down off the lights here for Rowe.
the Ox. Out of one tackle. Makes contact with Wilkerson, who eventually muscles him down. Great job by Viox standing up on his feet, once again running to that right side. And after making one man miss, able to push forward for that first down a little bit more. And now if you're Valley, you can think about chewing some clock here. But you've got to get control of the football. You cannot afford to make it a mistake here. A mistake props the door open. Just a little bit for Lamar, but it doesn't take much for them to find their stride. Fallert stopped on a gain of three, but hold on, penalty flag. Did you see any early motion there, Cameron? I don't believe I saw any early motion there, but it does look to be that it's on the offense, and they're going to be pushing this back a little bit. Here's Kyle Slusher. Get him for an illegal formation. Hey, at least it's not disconcerting signals. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely something that's going to be in the favor for the Warriors at the moment. <laughs> but regardless... You're in a first and 15 situation now. The only good thing about it is that you do get to redo that first down, which takes more time off the clock, which that's all that Valley can be hoping for right now. The clock does stop. 8.01. Fallert rolls to his left. Got through. And back to the original line of scrimmage to bring up second down and 10. Great move inside by Fowler. I thought he was going to get tripped up in the backfield there, and he's able to scratch forward basically to where this drive initially started once they reset the downs. Crucial set here for Lamar. Can they get their offense an opportunity? They need a stop. Around the edge. Oh, no. Here's the fake. Back to Flaherty. It's the Philly special, but a penalty flag comes out and into the end zone. Touchdown, but pinning the flag. We'll see if it stands. If it works, that was fantastic there for Grant Fowler. You can see the frustration from Grant Fowler because he had an exceptional stretch of speed. And after the, this fake play here, gets back over. He's left wide open there, but you can see where that penalty flag flies. I, th I think they're going to get holding. Frustration from Fallard. Officials still talking about this one here, but Coach Bayshore is pretty livid and adamant about this penalty. Well, And that's the interesting thing. If it is holding it, it's it's because the defender got held for being able to jump up to block the ball great throw by the way by tyler gay wow an illegal forward pass so the line of scrimmage was the 40, make that, yeah, 41 yard line. I think we're going to take another look at it here to see if and here's where it was on the spot. Here's the reason why that is an illegal forward pass. When that pass was given to Gag, it was a handoff in front of him. It was a pitch in front, and that means that that is a forward pass, which basically means it doesn't matter if it's an inch or 50 yards. It's still a forward pass that had to be behind him for that to be legal. Someone read up on the rule book as part <laughs> of their prep. That was very good, camera. Play action. Fallert slings it downfield incomplete and for a moment it looked like did he get it back to the line of scrimmage but uh, it was well beyond the original line of scrimmage now it's fourth down and talk about the opportunity the big break that Lamar needed it's, it's not the turnover but it's the mistake committed that could be the big problem here for Valley and it's a great play by Fowler in Valley just to throw that one away Riddick Gordon was back there almost immediately. This defensive line for Lamar hasn't had immense pressure opportunities today, but they've made them count if they can get back there. Fallard is listed as the punter. And he's going to kick it 
Maybe with too much bounce on a, oh no, a beauty. A slow roller down inside the eight yard line. Perfect situation here for Valley. Yes, you want to hopefully continue to have possession of that drive, but if, if there's gonna be a scenario where you have to give Lamar the ball back, at least they're pinned back at their own five. An opportunity here for Lamar, a team that has battled a lot of adversity this season, both on the field and off the field. And with all this rain and moisture that's out, this is a perfect situation for Lamar because, yes, they have a long field, but they have plenty of time to get down there. Wilkerson. And stopped on his first down carry, just a gain of a couple yards. Lamar does have all three timeouts to work with. These teams playing so many times, they met quite a bit at what is now the Dome and America Center in St. Louis in Show Me Bowl history. And a shot here to walk away with it all once again. Wilkerson pump fakes. All the way in, it's caught! Oh my! 91 yards to the house and we're tied pending the extra point I was just about to say I wonder when they're going to open that air raid attack once again great delivery from Wilkerson great catch by Query they're able to get it all the way for a crucial score and now you have Valley Catholic sweating look at where that ball was placed and the breakaway speed by Query we've seen it a couple times today already they're able to get that one in And the Lamar crowd going crazy on that sideline. That was unbelievable. Second touchdown of the day for Query. 166 yards receiving. And here comes our favorite PAT. <laughs> Maybe the biggest extra point of the season for Juarez. Ties the game as it's right down Grindstone. Celebration time here for Lamar. They were down by 21. They've tied it up on a dime from Wilkerson to Quarry. We'll be back with more from the fourth in just a moment from Columbia. Well, if you want to stay dry in this one, you're going to have to walk between the raindrops. As Lamar has now tied it up as they trail by 21 points in the first half. This is almost like an onside kick that just rolls and squibs its way before it's fielded by Henderson. And now if you're Valley Catholic, it's your turn to shine. Great control there by Henderson. If you want to live in a dream scenario for the Warriors, they need to put together a methodical drive that puts as limited time possible on the clock for Lamar into this one. But honestly, if you look at the tail of the tape in between both halves, They've been very similar, where Valley Catholic has come out strong to begin the half, but then as it tapers on, they've started to dwindle a little bit. 6-10 remaining. If Valley wins, they will tie Webb City for the most number of state championships in Missouri history. A win for Lamar would be their 10th. And Valley's going to need to do something historical in order to get this one going, as it's a great play in the backfield by the defensive line. That looks like 62, Riddick Gordon once again getting back there. That's a big stop. And, and now with the run game, with the weather playing a factor, you know, these cleats don't necessarily get as much traction. We, don't know, we do know that Fowler has a candidate of an arm. He's winning the air battle today, 234 yards through the air. Nine of 16, one interception throw. The one thing that I am curious to see is if they don't convert this, do they even dare to give the ball back to Lamar, or is it four-down territory regardless? Look at that open field tackle. Query on the stop. He's been the man of the hour here in the second half as that one was... Hauled in by Ryan Fallert. 
he might be in MVP territory for this game when you talk about the interception that he had and also the breakaway speed that he's been able to showcase. The Three guy, catches, 166 <laughs> yards, two touchdowns, and an interception, by the way, like you just mentioned there. He's been all over the field. Absolutely. In motion. And is it a timeout? And Lamar's going to take a timeout on third and nine. And I can't say that I blame head coach Bayshore because you want to make sure everybody's on the same page here. I mean, after that last pass, uh, time management isn't necessarily a huge concern. but And especially since they still have two timeouts to go, I, I don't blame them for wanting to get things right. Third down and nine upcoming. The Warriors are four for seven on third night, third down today. Neither team, though, has converted on fourth down, 0 for 3 and 0 for 1, with Lamar at the 0 for 3 mark. And even though Valley might not get another shot at it, if they have to give the ball back to Lamar, I don't think they go for it here. I think you have to punt it because at the 26, 27 yard line, that's just asking for way too much if something goes wrong. Now, Lamar has never led in this game, by the way. They're just now tuning in with us. They trailed by 21 points in the second quarter. They scored 14 unanswered. Now they're on another 14-0 tear to tie it up. Great. And last great. connection from Wilkerson to Query. Great resilience out there. Yeah, and that was the storyline coming into this one. Fallert. It's caught in space, and the receiver fell down. Absolute crucial play for this offense. Just a little floater over the middle of the field, and that's going to be to number 24, Kellen Tucker, his first catch of the day, the 5'10", 165-pound wide receiver. Team's going to have to be leaning on him from any point on once you're talking about next season with so many seniors on this team that will be leaving. But that play couldn't have come at a more crucial time for the Warriors. It gets him some experience as Fowler sensing some urgency. You play your cards right, you could get this down under a minute, kick a field goal for the win. Longest of the season, 37 yards off of the leg of Kuhn. Fowler with space, he'll take a slot. Look at how far he slid. <laughs> if that does not give a visual as to how slippery this turf can get when it gets wet. I don't know what else will. You have to tip your cap with the heads up awareness for what has just happened there from Fowler because sliding in bounds, it keeps the clock rolling. Yes, it does stop at the beginning of a first down, but just to have the awareness that, hey, I can't go out of bounds here. We need to chunk up as much of this as we possibly can. Surprise, he got the first down. It looked like he maybe started the slide before the marker. Regardless, Fowler the middle of the field and driven back the other way chalk it up to Riddick Gordon and company much needed play from the Lamar defensive line to basically do something to muster up anything that can get this offense off balance especially after they've gotten this momentum all of a sudden yeah they are not within field goal range yet from here it'd be more than 50 yards especially in the rain, that's a task that I don't think any kicker wants to deal with. Unless somehow they're going to sneak Harrison Mevis onto the sideline. Yeah. <laughs> and he would stick out like a sore thumb. <laughs> Fallert on second and ten. Pocket collapses, and he's sacked at midfield. Huge hit from Trace Woolridge, the senior tight end to defensive end. You're talking about a loss of over 10 yards there. If you're fouled, I get that you're trying to dance out of it, but because he was basically rushed and hurried, you can't keep running backwards like that. Because of it, it's going to make this offense pay. They're going to have to convert and get all the way down to the 28-yard line if they want to stay on the field. Talk about momentum shift there for Lamar. Third down and 20. You almost have got to get this down to a grindstone if you want to convert. Depending on how this play goes, I wouldn't put it past him if they go for it regardless. Fallert, incomplete. So he was trying to hit Henderson on the route. 
And there's a penalty flag back at the line of scrimmage. So they'll wave it off. I think Lamar on the sideline was wanting holding called. But honestly, I don't know if you would even accept the penalty. If that's the case. Then it's fourth and 20. And Lamar is going to send someone back to receive. Let's It'll be hope. Ian Googie. Let's hope that for Fowler and company that this punt works out a little bit better than the last one. Because if you remember from the first half, that only went 12 yards. They're going to have to push something up here more. Yeah, Fowler takes the snap, and here comes penalty flags. Penalty, flag. penalty flags have been a killer for this Warriors offense. Here Seventh in the second penalty. Half. Seventh penalty in our 13th combined penalty. And we're talking about an outcome of this game for what might happen if Lamar's able to end up shaking this out over the Warriors, I think you point to the penalties in the second half being the cause. Wobbler. Gogi at the 25. And flushed out of bounds outside the 30. Lamar has yet to lead in this contest. Can the legend of the Wilkerson family live on as they have a chance to take their first lead of the game in the fourth quarter. Can you believe it, Cameron? Two minutes, ten seconds, and two timeouts sounds like a pretty favorable situation to me if I'm this Lamar offense. If you would have told me that we'd be in this situation after Lamar went down 21 to nothing in the first quarter, I would have said you were crazy. But the fact that it's come, it's come from a lot of that adversity, which has been the story for this Lamar Tigers offense all these season long. A little bit of a high snap to Wilkerson. Flag comes out, should be holding. Penalty flags on both of these offenses to get drives going. For Lamar, I think this is the third or fourth drive in the second half where a penalty is how their drive has started. For the most part, they've just been ticky-tack five-yard penalties here and there, but this one is for 10 yards if it is holding. First down and 20. We saw the arm last time from Wilkerson. You go for the home run ball here at this point. Especially now that it's first and 20. It's not going to be easy to grind out these yards, especially with the wet turf. I wouldn't be surprised if they try to keep it on the ground for this one just to get a, at least a little bit more of a favorable situation. But then after that, you would think at some point they got to air it out. Looks like they're going to do it here. Yeah, Wilkerson deep down the field, hit as he throws. The ball popped out. He's taken a few shots there tonight, and that is the closest, I believe, that he's come to getting sacked. Up until that Fallard sack from the previous possession, I believe that was the first sack that had occurred all game long. Couldn't have come in a more timely fashion, though, for this defensive line of the Warriors. Second down and 20. Wilkerson, 7 of 10 for 209 yards through the air. His longest pass was for 91 to Chase Query on their last possession to tie the game. To the out route. It's caught. No, incomplete. I would love to see the replay there on that one because what a diving play by Googie in order to get that. Regardless, we're, we're going to have to see what happens or what occurs here with that one. Ball just seemed to be pushed a little too far out of bounds. Yeah, third down and 20. I, I think you got to heave it up now. How about this defensive response from the Warriors? Yes, it was mustered by an untimely penalty to start things off for the Lamar Tigers offense, but the way that they are holding right now, a lot would have to happen for them to get this first down. Googie takes the handoff. Penalty flag is out. And Fowler is able to wrangle them down behind the line of scrimmage, maybe for a loss of one. But if this is holding, I believe you're going to decline the penalty. Definitely going to decline it. It'll be fourth and 20 regardless. We should be seeing a punt here. 
Oh, yeah, now you got it. There's Kyle Slusher, our white hat. He's used that microphone quite a bit tonight. This is the 14th combined penalty, and it looks like they're waving it off. And I think they wave it off there because, to your point, regardless, I think they knew that the coaching staff for the Warriors was going to decline that regardless. Because now you're set up with a punt situation. And once again, no return man for Val. You would think they would have one back there to get some sort of yardage to push maybe even across midfield with where the positioning is of the Tigers. Yeah, now they're sending someone back. That is going to be A.J. Bassler. That's the right move with how slick this turf is. Absolutely. And I was about to say, you don't want to get a favorable roll for the Tigers to maybe push even as far back as the 30, depending on what the punt would look like, and have no one back there to return it. Great move. And now they're just trying to get as much time as they possibly can off the clock. One timeout left for the Warriors. That was a beauty of a punt. As Bassler... Tried to find the edge, and he's pushed up out of bounds. So, Valley Catholic with a minute 19 here in the state championship. Tied 28 with Lamar. They have led as by as many as 21 tonight. And I think there's a lot of maybe anticipation here as you look at the numbers off the leg of Will Kuhn this season. His long is 37 yards which means they would have to get the ball up to about the 22. And with only one timeout left remaining, you're going to be looking for a lot of plays that should be pushing towards the out-of-bounds boundaries. Grant Fallert. On first and 10. He'll have to run. Pressure's coming and incomplete. Clock will stop with a buck ten. He had a lot of initial time. Props to the offensive line for the Warriors. Fowler was scanning around. Great coverage by the secondary of the Tigers. Been a while since we've called Tyler Gage's name is. He ranges out down the left side. Fowler through the air on second down. And well over through Gage's target down the sideline. Gage appreciates that you at least tried to will it into existence, James. It's okay. <laughs> we're looking up for we're, we're looking out for him up here in the broadcast booth. Well, not everyone can be as uh predicting is Tony Romo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got a prediction for you. Somebody's going to win this game tonight. Probably. You know, that's usually how these state championships unfold. Warriors need another big play here if they got to get something rolling. Valley, 5 of 9 on third down. And a bobbled snap to the right and picked off. I think that's Quarry who has it. What an untimely interception, especially... Oh, no, it's Wilkerson. It is Wilkerson with the interception. He had three interceptions last playoff game. It couldn't have come at a better time. He's basically saying, I'm putting this game in my hands. Not the throw that you want there from Fowler. I understand that it was bobbled off the snap, but you have to keep your composure. If you're going to throw that to the far out of bounds, aim for more of that sideline then back into the numbers of Wilkerson. Intended man there was Colin Henderson. That was a tight window to squeeze that into. you got to be confident in your ability if you're going to let that one go, especially in this crucial of a game. Lamar is yet to lead in this game. They could have a chance to do it with under a minute. Controlled by 21 in the second quarter. Wilkerson on first down. Driven up on a gain of one. And another thing to look at, Lamar has yet to attempt a field goal this season. You touched on that quite a bit in the first half. Look for the Lamar offense to open up this air raid game again. I don't know necessarily when it's going to come out yet, but if they want any chance of getting this one done, they're going to have to muster something like that up, but I don't think they're going to do it because they still have two timeouts remaining. We're under 30 seconds to go. 
I oh now they burn it, or somebody's burned a timeout. It is indeed Lamar. That's interesting. That's the same thing that we saw at the end of the first quarter, rather first half. But on the other side, when Valley had the ball, they did not have great time management skills in the final minute. I'm having a tough time wrapping my head around the thought process for both head coaches now at, at the end of halves. There had to be at least about 30 seconds that trailed off the clock after that play. Why are you not calling a timeout to at least give yourself a shot, maybe two, three deep shots down the field, get something going? I mean, it's not like it's 1990 and there's a broken phone <laughs> down there on the sideline and Colorado gets five downs. Very good point. The thing that's that's really going on here, it's just why not use the timeout? I don't, I don't necessarily know if maybe there's emotions and anxiety about the potential of a mistake in this crucial and close of a game i'll be honest with you neither of these head coaches talking with them struck me as as someone like that they, I, they both seem very calm and collected they know what they're going to do and they got everything planned out wilkerson through the air it's caught by han and a great open field tackle and now lamar will have to burn their final timeout finally use that timeout at a likely time there. I was worried that they were going to let more time run off the clock. 16 seconds left to go. You should be looking for anything to be angling towards the out-of-bounds margins unless they're trying to take a deep shot and get it done now. In case you're wondering, it would be a 63-yard uh, field goal attempt. <laughs> I don't necessarily <laughs> think that's that's going to be occurring from, from the meantime here. I believe that's where Harrison Mevis hit it from. But there's a chance here, folks, if you want to take home a... You can purchase your own copy of today's championship after the broadcast has ended. Click that download button on Misha.tv. With the power that Jose Juarez has been able to use for the PATs, if they can somehow get to the 30 or something, you might as well give them a shot. And that ball was maybe tipped at the line of scrimmage down to 13 seconds, and it is fourth down. you got to punt this one away because on the other side of the field, the yard line that Valley's targeting for field goals is the 22. The longest this season for Kuhn has been a 37-yarder. Which, by the way, they've been practicing wet ball drills here in the last two or three minutes on the Valley side of the field, mainly with the holder Preston Lurk and the deep snapper Connor Clanton. Control sometimes is honestly out of your hands when you're dealing with conditions like this. So you have to hope that maybe after the punt or maybe they decide to go for it here, They'll hand off. They go for it. They got the first down, but now they are out of timeouts. The clock will stop for the chains to move. you got to get up to the line of scrimmage quickly. And do you clock it here? And they misplaced the ball. They didn't even have it on the hash line. Now it's at the hash. And Wilkerson will clock it with five seconds to go. Now you're basically set up with a situation to do a Hail Mary, and if Wilkerson's arm's not strong enough to get it there, you have to maybe think about some hook and ladder maneuvers that might be coming behind him. What a game. Lamar trailed 21-0. They battled back in the second quarter. They cut the lead down to 21-14 to the halftime break and, and they tied it here in the fourth quarter. Wilkerson to the sideline. It's almost intercepted and the clock hits zero. It looked like maybe there was a second on the clock when that ball hit, but I, I don't know if they can go back and change it. Waiting for the official ruling here from our officiating crew, but I believe we're going to go to overtime, Cameron. Who would have thought that that's the situation that we were going to be in, James? Once again, for anyone that's just now tuning into this broadcast, Lamar was down 21 to nothing after the first quarter, and for them to battle back in this kind of scenario, what else can you want in a state championship game? Yes, we are going to overtime, so we will go to break. 28 all at the end of regulation in the Class 2 State Championship at the 2023 Misha Show Me Bowl. How will it unfold? Find out when we return to Faro Field in mid mo Back in a moment. Well, regulation wasn't enough, so we head to overtime with alternating possessions. 
the Warriors, who led by as many as 21, can they find enough within themselves to get over the hump? It's just so... It's, it's such a physical game, and the, the, the mental side of it, you're up by 21, you, you, and you blow the lead, and now you got to find it you know, deep within you to come up with a win, and it's, it's not going to be easy against this Lamar team because they have a lot of fight in them. They're going to have to find some energy from somewhere because both halves for the Valley Catholic Warriors have basically panned out the same way. They started out quick, started out warm when they were warm, and then as the cold started to get to this team, start to get under their skin, metaphorically speaking, and probably figuratively, or actually speaking, <laughs> it's it's something that they haven't been able to close out the quarters, close out the halves well, and especially in these rainy conditions, it favors Lamar with how run-heavy of their offense it is. There's Kyle Slusher. So we'll have another coin toss. I feel like we're back to square one. We're at 3 o'clock this afternoon. You know, just reset it up, put the point totals down to 0-0. Zero, zero. That's basically what it's at now, 28-28. We're going to have ourselves a 25-yard line shootout scenario for both teams. So Valley won the toss. Typically in these 25-yard shootouts, you want to play defense first. So that is what Valley has elected. And... This is interesting. Lamar is going to opt to go to the south end zone where they have yet to score today. All their points have come at the north end zone. And if you're not from the area or if you're not a Missouri Tiger fan as to why we care so much about the north end zone, there's been so many just oddities with that north end zone throughout Mizzou history. Whether it's the, the flea kicker in 1997 against Nebraska, uh, just so many crazy weird things have happened. And regardless, Lamar's kind of hoping that some of that juju, whatever it is with the north end zone, helps out in their favor because, to your point, that's a great highlight that they have not scored on that side of the field. Guess maybe trying to shake off any bad juju that might have been coming their way on that end zone. So Valley will have to keep Lamar out of the end zone. Tied at 28. After regulation wasn't enough. How about opening things up with a pass if you're the Lamar Tigers? Every single possession that they've started off, it has been a run every single time. If you wanted to do something to kind of explode and get off your feet, maybe not necessarily an end zone shot, but something that can startle the Warriors. Yeah, with a stop here, Valley can win with a field goal. That's Wilkerson. Takes it on first and ten, and he's going to break free. Touchdown, Lamar. Or, you know what, never mind what I said. How about you just keep doing what you're doing, and eventually it's going to work out. That's the mentality of this Lamar offense. What a great way for that hole to open up off of that left tackle side of the ball there. And as you can see, Wilkerson, as he's been doing all game, this is going to be a keep, and he's just able to squeeze through great blocking by the entirety of the offensive line, and he was running with nothing but green grass in front of him once it broke loose. Now you talk about the most important extra point of the season. This is it. This is it for Jose Juarez, because if you do not get the extra point and Valley scores, they can win it with an extra point of their own. I don't think height would be an issue. It just has to be accuracy. It's got to be right down the middle. Kick is up, and it is good. First lead of the night for Lamar as they're up by seven. Juarez dots the eye. First lead for Lamar after being down 21 points. To think that we're in this scenario in overtime, it's been something that's been special to see in the 2A class championship. Just an absolutely thriller of a night, and Juarez 5 for 5 on extra points. Talk about being down 21 nothing. If you look at the spread here in the second half, or I guess second half in overtime, it's 
A 21-7 advantage for the Lamar Tigers, trying to win their 10th state title. Oh, and they're going to play everything down at the north end zone. Maybe that's that's exactly why they wanted it. So when they say they wanted to defend, that's interesting. Well, it's splitting the hairs here is this handoff is taken and a quality carry for a gain of seven or eight by the quarterback, Grant Fallert. If not for a shoestring tackle, that was basically going to be identically what just happened with Wilkerson on that last play. Great job to basically reach out and try to find anything you can to grab onto Fowler to trip him up. These defenses have got to be gassed. And, and numb. <laughs> and by the way, Fowler very wet as he dries his hands there on the sideline. And these jerseys have gone from royal blue to almost a navy blue with all the moisture accumulation. Second and two from the 17. We're in overtime, and a timeout taken by Valley Catholic. At least in these kind of situations when the timeout's taken, you see how the defense is set up, you know what you're trying to accomplish. But regardless, it also just makes you think, is the head coaching staff starting to question what the offense is doing out there and their confidence and able to get it done? And this has to be an absolute grueling game to, to go through. When you're talking about the rain, you're talking about the cold, these guys have been out here for so long. Yeah, we're getting close to the three-hour mark. Although that first half went very quick. First half went quick, but three hours cold and wet does not sound too appealing. <laughs> and they are going to change out the football after that timeout, and that is the only timeout for Valley. They need a touchdown and an extra point to tie. Otherwise, the season is over for the Warriors. The pass almost intercepted, and it will bring up third down and two, and I think we're going to see the run here. You can see the frustration from Fowler there. Just slipped out of his hands when you're dealing with conditions like this, especially this late in the game. You have to think that you're starting to get into the tendency of whether it's numb hands, maybe cracking hands, and just overall grip control is something that's going to be extremely difficult right now. And it comes at an unfortunate time, too, because that was a great ran route by number 18, Colin Henderson. He had shook his man. He was wide open. Out of the gun. The ball is on the turf. Did Valley recover? They did. It will be fourth down. Talk about a lucky scenario, and regardless, now you're in do-or-die situation. But remember, they don't have to go for it all here. They just need the four yards to try to reset the downs. And now you don't have a timeout to talk things over. 25 seconds to run the next play. This has got to be your best play of the season. A play that's worked for the Warriors about 90% of the time is these Fowler keeps where he just runs to the left or right of the offensive line, but he's going to drop back to pass this one. Oh, my. Very deep. Back goes Fowler, dumps it off. It's over. Lamar overcomes a 21-point deficit to win it in overtime. Not the situation you want to be in if you're Fowler. Great display of disruption by that defensive line for the Lamar Tigers there to basically get him off his spot. He didn't have a chance. By the time he wheeled back around, he should have been looking to go towards the end zone at that point because that throw was going to be way too short for that first down. All the way back from a 21-point hole in the second quarter, Lamar in overtime wins it 35-28 on an absolute thriller with another meeting with Valley Catholic. They're going to have a party tonight down on I-49. And remember, this keeps Valley Catholic from tying the overall Misha State Championships record with Webb City. So this one's got to sting just a little bit extra. Uh, and I bet you the Webb City fan base uh, doesn't want to share that record. <laughs> You're telling me. What an unbelievable game. Alex Wilkerson gets the game-winning touchdown. 
And this one has really got a sting for head coach Nager. It's still poised and shaking hands all the way down the line. Now he meets there with head coach Bayshore. And it doesn't feel like Lamar won this game. I, I know they did, but it, the best way to describe it, it almost feels like the way that the Royals won the World Series in 2015. They didn't lead through the majority of Game 5, but, you know, you it's more important look at the scoreboard when it has zeros or when you're down to your final out. And you have to point out the offensive execution for the Warriors in the second half. When you talk about the amount of costly penalties that basically kept their great drives from developing into more points, when you combine that with the weather, with going away from a lot of their early passing attacks that worked, there's so many things that factored into the the issue that Valley could not get it done down the stretch. Now we will wrap things up with the presentation of the runner-up trophy first to Valley Catholic and then the state championship trophy, the 10th one in program history for Lamar. And how about this? This is win number 50 for Coach Bayshore, win number 50 in 55 games. That's impressive. That's a stat that you like to hang up on your mantle, and it's going to look especially great next to that state championship trophy. He has got to be proud of his team now. With the injuries that they faced in the middle of the season, the hurdles they had to overcome to, to not just you know close out the year regular season healthy, but then to put on a run... In the postseason as well, their only loss coming to Seneca, their rival, on an up-class game, Seneca in Class 3. And how about the sportsmanship by both of these head coaches? Alma maters of both of their helms that they are coaching over, they've gone over specifically to lots of players on either sideline to congratulate them and tell them how hard they worked. Well, one big factor in this game that's not going to be on any of the stat sheets, it's not going to be on any of the game notes. Well, actually, it might go on the stat sheet. The weather. The rain. The rain made a difference. It it changed the format of the game to a, to a degree where Lamar was able to take an advantage. Although, kind of counter myself on that point, it didn't make a difference on the pass game for... Wilkerson on that touchdown that tied it. Talk about that throw, by the way. That that touchdown you're speaking of to Chase Quarry. That play truly defined and changed everything going into this game. Head coach Judd Nager is also being presented. I think we're going to send it off medal. to the PA nice crew here at the class, the 2023 class, class two championship. As, uh, Valley Catholic gets their trophy, and then we'll see the presentation over to Lamar. But we'll step aside for a moment. And now for our championship team, the Tigers of Lamar High School, who finished the year with a record of 13 and 1. Presenting awards on behalf of the Mission Board of Directors is Josh Hainer of the South Central District. Head coach Jared Beeshore is also being presented the individual player medals. How about a nice round of applause for the 2023 last two champions from Lamar High School. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us here this afternoon at Row Field. Make sure you buckle up and have a safe trip home. Well, what a thrilling game for Lamar. And look at this. Look at this show of sportsmanship. Everyone getting together to take a knee at midfield. And I don't think I saw this in any other any, any other of the class games. I haven't seen this in any other show me bowl either. And it's just an incredible display from both coaching staffs, head coaches, your team leaders, 
the fact that the entire team is getting together after this, especially after there's very, very different emotions for both of these sidelines right now, something special for sure. Absolutely, and, and what a special game this was for Lamar. Maybe was not the outcome that Valley wanted. As they led by 21, Lamar overcame the adversity in this contest to win it in overtime. But for all of us here at Misha.tv, this is going to wrap it up for us here for the Class 2 Championship. Of course, we have the nightcap, the finale, which has probably been pushed back due to the rain and overtime. In Class 6, it'll be Jim Powers and Bo Bateman on the call. But what an evening here from Columbia, Missouri. Lamar wins their 10th state championship, 35-28 in overtime, as we sign off here from Columbia, Missouri. For all of our Misha.tv crew and my broadcast partner, Cameron Connor, says James Stanley saying so long. We'll see you next year, folks, here from Como.